algebra students. Today we are simplifying radicals. So let's say we have this, uh, this radical here, it's the square root of 216, and we want to write this in a simplified form. Well, uh, one of the things you, uh, you might look at is, look at this number here and say, is there a perfect square? And by perfect square, I mean 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, numbers like that that are something times itself. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So is there a perfect square that will go into 216? And uh, I'm going to say, yeah, uh, I'm going to say 4 goes into 216. And so that means this would be the square root of 4 times the square root of 216 divided by 4. And 216 divided by 4 is going to be, oh shoot, I guess I better just work it out. Uh, 4 goes into 216, 5, uh, 54 times, okay? So this will be the square root of 4 times the square root of 54. Now, the square root of 4, I know what that is. That's 2. And the square root of 54, I'm thinking, I can continue to simplify this. Uh, let me see, 54, what goes into that? Hey, 9 goes into 54. It's 9 times 6. So this will be the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. The square root of 9 is, of course, 3. So this is 2 times 3 times the square root of 6. And now, if I take 2 times 3, I would get 6 times the square root of 6. What does that mean? It means that 6 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 216. Uh, do them both on a calculator, you'll see. You get the exact same answer. So, uh, okay, that's all fine and good. Let's see if we can uh, do this one more time. Let's see if now we can simplify the value, uh, the square root of negative 63. The square root of negative 63. First off, there's a negative there. So this is going to be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 63. And I know what the square root of negative 1 is. It's i. So this is i times the square root of 63. Secondly, as I look at that 63, I think, I know a perfect square that goes into that. 9 again. So this is going to be i times the square root of 9 times the square root of 7, because 9 times 7 is 63. The square root of 9, I know what that is. That's 3. So this will be 3i times the square root of 7 and we are done. The square root of negative 63 equals 3i times the square root of 7. Not so difficult, is it? Uh, let's take another one, except this time let's make it a little more challenging. Let's take a number that has a variable inside it, so, uh, a, a root with a variable in it. So this is 98 times x to the fourth. Okay, we have 98 times x to the fourth, and we're going to take the square root of that. Okay, well, let's see. First, let's just deal with the number part, okay? So this is going to be the square root of 98 times the square root of x to the fourth. I'm separating apart my, uh, my number from my variable. Uh, now, the number, we've learned how to do that. 98, if I cut that in half, I get 49, and 49 is my next perfect square. It's 7 squared. So that means this is going to be the square root of 49 times the square root of 2, right? Which is 7 root 2. That's the number part. Now i got to look at the, uh, the variable part. Well, if you think about it for a second, uh, x squared squared is x squared times x squared, which is, I would just add up those exponents, x to the fourth power. If x squared squared is x to the fourth, then the square root of x to the fourth must be x squared. So that means I would have x squared there. And in essence, what did I do? I just took the, uh, the exponent there and cut it in half. That's what you do when you take the square root of something that is to a, uh, an even power there. You just cut it in half. So this is all fine and good. We have, uh, I'm going to go ahead and write it like this. I'm going to write it x 
or 7x squared times the square root of 2. Uh, as I'm writing things, you won't always see things written like this. You might, you might see the variable come at the very end. Uh, I just like to put the radical at the end because that way there's no confusion about what's inside and what's outside the radical. Um, okay, one more uh, little example that I want to give you, and that is this. Uh, let's look at the square root of 24x to the seventh. Okay? And you can imagine why I've chosen this, because this time my exponent inside there is not even. So what am I going to do? First off, let's separate apart our numbers and our variables. So it's the square root of 24 times the square root of x to the seventh. And now, uh, let's see, 24. Is there a perfect square that goes in there? Uh, yeah, 4 does. So this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 6 which of course simplifies to 2 times the square root of 6. And now over here on the, uh, the uh, variable side, again, what did I do here? I looked for a perfect square that was a factor of this. Well, there's a perfect square that's a factor of this also. Just knock it down one. This is x to the 6 times x, isn't it? So this is the square root of x to the 6 times the square root of x. Square root of x to the 6, I know how to do that. I just did it a second ago. You just cut your exponent in half. So that would give us x cubed times the square root of x. That doesn't change. So I have 2 times the square root of 6 times x cubed times the square root of x. Let's kind of put this all together. And so this will be 2x cubed, that part. Now the radical part times the square root of 6x. Let's put it all under one radical and that is our simplified version. Piece of cake, isn't it? I thought so. All right, see you next video.